Yo, what is up, my fellow 2K-ers? It's your pap boy, and you know what time it is. It's time to make our AI teammates smarter, more effective, just better defenders. All right, that's what it is. It's defensive settings episode number five. It's time for on-ball screen settings. I don't even need to tell you guys how important these ones are. Let's just get to it. Let's go ahead and start with the hedge settings. All right, the first one we're going to take a look at, our first choice is going to be no hedge. Of course, the hedge defender is not going to be hedging at all, so he's just going to kind of hang back and chill. So this is a horrible defense to defend the pull-up, of course, but what's funny and pretty dumb is that this setting doesn't even do a good job of defending the drive either. And that's supposed to be the whole point of using no hedge, to have the hedge defender kind of play it safe and make sure he doesn't get blown by. I mean, you're seeing this here, what is that? I mean, do something, he, he, he does nothing the entire play, he just watches the whole thing unfold. So that's a negative on that one. And by the way, it's a very similar concept with the stay attached setting. And if we put this on yes, you'll see a very similar effect to what we just saw, and that's why we're always going to want to go with no, okay? Even if they have somebody like Ryan Anderson, somebody like that, it's still just too costly to our defense to completely take the hedge defender out of play. And you'll see there are other defenses we can play that do a pretty dang good job against the pick and pop, but they don't completely eliminate our hedge defender. And speaking of that, let's come back up here to the hedge settings and take a look at the catch hedge option. Okay, you see the hedge defender dropping down there again. Uh, the idea is for him to sort of keep the ball handler and the roll man to keep everything in front of him. But if they run the pick and pop and the screener fades out there, then the hedge man is going to be nowhere. So what he really should be doing is kind of playing like a center field role. You know, be there to hold the ball handler up a little bit, kind of buying time for the on-ball defender to recover. But once he does recover and his assistance isn't needed anymore, no matter where his man is, if he's rolling or popping or whatever, wherever he is, he needs to recover back to him in a hurry. And in a pick and pop scenario, he, he's just going to lose tabs on his man. And that's because this year, this situation, for some reason, it just makes your defense scramble and in the dumbest way possible. Why is he heading over to the corner and then you have Kawhi who's on the wing trying to sprint over all the way from there over to the opposite wing to contest the pick and pop shot? What the hell is that? And in my testing, it was really about half and half. Uh, about half the time he will try to recover back out to his original man, uh, but the other half of the time it'll trigger these nonsensical rotations that aren't effective at all. So yeah, but either way, catch hedge, totally exploited by the pick and pop. Now he's dropping way down there, so of course he's not going to be there to defend a pull up right off of the screen, but even when the ball handler penetrates deep into the paint before he pulls up, a lot of times he'll just keep backing up and backing up, so he doesn't really ever stop the ball, and he's not in a good position to get a contest on a little jumper in the paint like this. Just not quite sure what he's accomplishing here. And unfortunately, another thing he'll do in this kind of situation sometimes, and, and this is also new this year, he'll try to take the charge, and he'll get like locked into the charge position. I mean, look at this. The ball handler is already by you. He's already made a drop-off pass to your man. He's ready to lay it in, and you're still standing there covering your nuts. So moving on, let's, let's take a look at hard hedge here. So one of the things with this is the hedge defender just doesn't do a very good job a lot of times of getting back to his man once the on-ball defender has recovered. So a lot of times it gives up a pretty easy roll. Now another thing that he'll do on hard hedge um, is problematic is the hedge defender will step out there and hedge too early. And this obviously is going to give the offense an easy slip opportunity. I mean, look, look at Holiday there. There's nothing holding him back. So we've seen this before, right? The, the CPU not doing a very good job of executing the hard hedge, being a little too aggressive, and it's leaving our defense exposed on the back end. So that's not breaking news, but this right here, guys, this is brand new. Unfortunately, th this is brand new to 2K19, and it is by far the most annoying annoying thing, the number one reason I would never have the CPU run hard hedge. And that is, I know you guys are going to feel me on this, it triggers way too many on-ball steal attempts. And I, I think I speak for all of us when I say, oh dear god, please make it stop. 
So that's definitely going to be a no on hard hedge too. Uh, let's take a look at the next one over here, double. Now in a lot of cases, doubling the pick and roll is a little too aggressive and not necessary, but if it's executed properly, it can be useful in some cases. Um, but the only problem is, take a look here, CPU doesn't do a very good job of executing this one either. As you can see, it's, it's just way too easy for the ball handler to split their doubles. Look at that gap. And of course, just like hard hedge, it's going to leave the roll man open too much. It's going to give easy slip opportunities. And oh yeah, how, how, how could I possibly forget uh, the reaching? The reaching is also a problem when you have it on double. It's actually worse. So doubles out of there too. Uh, I, I wouldn't even use it situationally. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's really going to leave us with uh, one other option. We got soft hedge. I mean, just by process of elimination, if nothing else. But actually, I was very impressed when I tested this setting. It was pretty damn good. So you'll see the hedge defender is going to step out there. Not too far, not too early. He's not going to absolutely tackle the ball handler trying to steal the ball from him. But he's just going to slow him up a little bit, stop him from turning that corner, just buy the on-ball defender enough time to get through the screen and recover back to the ball handler. Okay, and most importantly, the hedge defender does not lose tabs on his original man with this setting. And it really doesn't matter where the screener goes, if he rolls or if he pops. The hedge defender does a good job of sort of keeping one eye on him as he's taking care of his hedging responsibilities. And then as he gets done with that, he pretty much knows where he is and he gets back there. It's just good, solid, smart coverage. You, you could just tell that the hedge defender is aware of all of his responsibilities and he's trying his best to do it. That's a whole hell of a lot more than we could say for any of these other options. So soft hedge, that's the one. And of course, we're going to want to do the same thing for the hedge center. All right, so we got these three done. Now we just need to take care of the on ball screen settings. So this concerns the on ball defender. What is he going to do when he gets hit with that screen? So let's go ahead and knock out a couple of these real quick here. First one, switch. Obviously, the concern is mismatches. So I would not use this option option unless you have a very very versatile defensive lineup on the floor and you feel like basically all of your defenders can defend one through five which is pretty rare um, especially this year with post players having more of an advantage than they've had in the past okay the next one over here is ice um, it's it's not that it's absolutely terrible, um, but I just feel like we can play a lot better defense on pick and rolls than just handing the ball handler a free lane. And that's basically what you're doing with this setting. You're just handing him the baseline. And also it doesn't really apply if the pick and roll is being run in the middle of the floor at the top of the key. I, I'm, I'm just not a fan. We, we, we can do better than this. Okay, and the other two options we got here, um, obviously we got go over and go under. And actually, neither one of these is really that bad, but there are a couple of downsides with going under uh, that we want to look out for. Of course, here we have the hedge defender trying to go recover back to his man. And sometimes when you have it on go under, the on-ball defender can kind of get in his way. So they'll kind of slow each other up or knock each other off their paths. And that's going to leave openings for the ball handler or the roll man or both. Okay, and the last difference between these two, go over and go under, uh, you'll see here first with go under, did a lot of testing with this, and the on-ball defender just seems to get a little more stuck on the screen, he takes a little longer to get through it, the screen just connects a little more. So like I said, it's not like go under is horrible, but definitely that's enough for us to say that we're going to want to go with go over just a little better, a little more effective. And for this one, I I don't care that the center is setting the screen. We're, we're still, for the same reasons, we're still going to want to go with go over. Whew, all right, guys. <laughs> Oh my god, you have no idea how, how long I, in real time, that this actually took me and how much I spent on it, but whatever. We, we got it. Uh, I appreciate any time you, you leave a comment. I, I always try my hardest to read every single one of those and reply to them. So keep those coming. Let me know what you think um, about any of these. If you have any questions, if you need anything, you can hit me up, of course. And naturally, if you enjoyed the vid, if you found this useful, remember to leave a like down there for me before you go. And speaking of going, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. I thank you guys for watching and all the support. And of course, I'll see you guys right back here next time on 2K with the Pap. Wow.